Hello everyone, so in this video we are unboxing a dash cam from Garmin and this is the Garmin dash cam 47. So they also have a few other models in the lineup. Uh, there is a dash cam mini, uh, there's a dash cam 57, 67 with different resolutions and different sizes. Being mini is the smallest and 47, 57 and 67 about the same physical size but different uh, resolution recording resolutions and the sensors I picked the 47 because uh, to me personally the 1080p recording is more than enough and what separates the Garmin uh, dash cam with a whole bunch of other dash cam that you can find on Amazon uh, that's selling for slightly less is that this one actually features a built-in GPS so when the dash cam is re recording um, you're able to actually also record the speed and the location info in this GPS, in this uh, camcorder, recorder, okay? So um, the reason I bought this is my last dash cam, uh, which is a very cheap, like $60, 1080p dash cam, actually broke um, in my car without my knowledge last year. And I've been using, <laughs> I've been driving my car for a whole year without realizing that my dash cam was actually broken. So when it comes to time to upgrade, I thought, okay, maybe I should buy one from a reputable um, manufacturer, Garmin being uh, one of the, my favorite sports watch, smart watch makers, okay? They also make a dash cam, so I was like, why not? And I just bought this. Uh, I believe this came out about a year ago. Um, again, this is not the most advanced, but it does give me the feature that it needs. Uh, features a micro SD card slot, so you can put in your micro SD card for extended recording. But on board, it comes with a 16 gig micro SD card. So, without further ado, we're gonna open up the packaging for the first time. Uh, we're gonna take a look at what's inside, and then I'm gonna actually try to mount this in my car. And I'm gonna show you guys at the end uh, some recordings from the daytime and some recordings from the evening time, so uh, you're able to judge for yourself uh, the quality of the. Garmin dash cam 47 okay very typical Garmin packaging uh, you have a very simplified uh, paper box and inside you just have the product itself and a whole bunch of other accessories tucked under okay so um, it comes with this another interesting thing is this comes with a magnetic mount so when you finish using it you can actually put this off the uh, the car to save it from the extreme hot weather of say the Miami Sun, which we live in, and probably the reason that my dash cam actually broke uh, faster than I thought. So if you're able to, you know, leave this away when you finish with uh, recording, uh, when you, you know, go to work and come back from work and just put it in the glove box to save it from excessive heat, that might actually extend the life of your dash cam, okay? So also comes with a pretty long uh, USB power cable this looks like extender and a shorter USB cable. And again, this is a micro USB. So still maybe a step behind. I know a lot of manufacturers now, you know, already is using the uh, USB-C connectors and this one still has micro USB connection, okay? Um, you have a Garmin branded uh, uh, car adapter for dual USB slots. So if you plug this in, you can charge your phone and also use the dash cam at the same time. Or if you have a rear facing dash cam, you can probably plug both in the same spot, okay? Uh, this one is rated at, let's see, uh, 1.3 amp max. Uh, that's the input, a total output of 2.4 amps, okay? Uh, on each of those ports. So a uh, total of uh, 4.8 amps total uh, from this little adapter. And that looks like it's pretty much it. You have a little quick guide on how to use those or adapters available. You even got a polarizer, which is kind of cool. Um, and also the user manual, okay? So that's pretty much it. Uh, next, let's see. I'm gonna take a quick look at the manual and then we'll come back and continue with the setup. And I believe this one you can actually pair with your phone so you can, uh, you're able to monitor the dash cam and also uh, download some of the footages at the same time, okay? So like, this one is an extra, is an extra uh, mount adapter. You can use this in two cars, and this one is actually the actual adapter right in here. So 
you're supposed to actually just peel this off. This is a, a sticky side and put it on your car and you can use this one on another car, I believe. Okay, pretty cool. And this one comes with the a screen on the back. The Dashcam Mini doesn't have a screen, but have pretty much the same uh, functionality and the specs as the Dashcam 47. Okay, so that's the difference between the, the cheaper one and this one. And this is the lens. The lens does look like it's coated. And again, typical with all those uh, dash cams, it's, it's a fairly small um, sensor right there, but at least it's uh, it's coated, okay? So that's nice. Uh, in terms of weight, it's, it's kind of hefty. Um, and I believe you can take this off. Yeah, you can easily take this off from, from the mount itself, which is kind of nice for storage. And on the side, you have the micro USB port right here. And on the bottom comes with a 16 gig of uh, micro SD card, but I'm not gonna be using this. I'm gonna be using my own, which is um, 64 gig, just slightly larger. Uh, gives it a little bit longer recording time. Uh, let's see, there is a save button and there is, are some function buttons over here and a power button with a back function. Uh, so it's not touch screen. All the functions are through here, which I, I think is kind of nice. You don't really want to touch or like, you know, I, I personally don't like a touch screen on a dash cam. So that's kind of nice. And besides that, it looks like a little uh, speaker down here. And that's pretty much it. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, the front is a plastic grid uh, with some interesting textures. Okay, and a Garmin logo. All right. So again, let me read the manual really quick and then we can come back and finish the setup. All right, guys, so I did quickly read through the quick uh, install instruction and it seems to be super easy. Okay, so basically this is uh, Bluetooth enabled and you can install a app called Garmin Drive Drive app. And once you have this installed, you're able to actually control some of the settings and load the videos uh, from directly from the dash cam to your phone uh, in case of if there's an accident and you need to quickly load um, a video clip, okay? Um, and also, the installation is extremely simple. Uh, being this one is magnetically controlled, uh, you basically just unpeel this, stick it onto the windshield, but make sure your windshield is very nicely cleaned. It's better to clean it with 70% alcohol just to make sure there's no oil and grease. Stuck this piece on there and your installation is complete. And the last step, of course, if you have your own uh, micro SD card, you can replace the old one in here or the old, the 16 gig one from the bottom of the device and replace it with a larger capacity. So what I have is a 128 gig Samsung micro SD card. And I got this on Amazon for like a really good price. So if you guys are interested, I'll post a link and uh, it's ready to go. Very last step, plug this into your car's, uh, you know, cigarette uh, power adapter. And I'm using the super long uh, USB, micro USB cable. Uh, this is what I used before for my uh, last dash cam camera. And this one being the dedicated micro USB cable for Garmin. I'm going to be using this one as well. I'm going to show you guys how to set this up in your car so it doesn't really uh, obscure your view and uh, looks nice. Okay, so we're pretty much, much gone through with the unboxing section. Next, we can actually go to the car and have this set up. Okay. And before we go to the car, uh, I'll show you guys this one. The cool thing for the Garmin um, dash cam uh, 47 is it's actually battery powered. So it's got enough juice to actually do some recording if your car does lose power, you know, uh, during an accident. Okay, so you're just going to low press the power button. And you can see how quick it starts up. Okay. Uh, since I've never used it, I'm just going to go through the setup. And again, it's not a touch screen, so you're going to use the button over here. That's the confirmation button. So I don't know why it's it's in Spanish, but let's see. Okay, uh, this is where you select the language. I'm going to choose American English. And this is agreement. It says they're not liable and camera placement. So I'm gonna be actually placing the camera at the center of the car. So I'm gonna select center, okay? And the vehicle is actually a normal car. And I'm gonna have record audio off just for privacy reasons. 
you can have it on, but I don't think it's gonna make any difference. Um, it's really your personal preference, okay? So for privacy reason, I usually turn the recording audio off. Garmin Drive app, which is the one I just installed on my phone. I'm gonna hit OK. And this is where you can scan and install, but I already installed it, so I'm gonna skip and go ahead. And it's already started to record. Once it's rec when it's recording, it's gonna show this little blue light. And obviously, battery is really low. So I think before I actually um, use this in the car, I'm actually gonna go fully charge the battery just on my uh, wall charger. Once it's fully charged, I'm gonna go to my car and have it installed because I don't want this to get partially charged during use and then you know have the battery kind of die during the use, which is not good, okay? So before I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna go fully charge it before I install it in my car uh, sometime later tonight. So again, what I'm gonna do is turn the power off and go to my charger and charge it. All right, see you guys in a bit. So when I put the, um, the Garmin onto the charger and connect it through the Garmin app, I actually discovered a few extra features that I think is quite interesting and helpful. And also, um, I guess, justifies the $150 purchase price. Uh, so right now it's updating the firmware. And uh, once it finishes updating, I'll show you guys some of those interesting features that I've found. So right now, um, I have the Garmin actually charging um, on the on my charger. And it's interestingly, it's voice activated. So if I say, OK, Garmin, it's going to bring up this. Never mind. Never mind. It's going to bring up that manual, voice control manual, which is pretty cool. So you can record video. You can enable audio. You can take uh, time lapse photos when you're traveling. And uh, OK, Garmin. And you can also just take a picture. Never mind. <laughs> it's actually actively listening, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, that's one interesting feature, which is voice activated. And now I'm going to have, you know, it's already updated to the newest software through the Garmin Drive app. I'm going to have it charge for a while before I install it on the car. But uh, right now, what I can tell you is, I think it's $150 is very well um, spent because uh, this thing actually supports lane departure monitoring. It supports the red light traffic warning or alert. It also supports uh, um, like a coalition warning system. So it's a whole bunch of systems all in one, all integrated into this camera, plus the GPS, okay? Um, I think it's an excellent feature to test out when the camera is actually mounted. So we'll find out sooner or later. All right, guys. So as you can see, uh, right now I'm inside my car and uh, we're ready to install the dash cam. Uh, one thing I want to note, to take note and let you guys know is when you install it, and for me, I'm going to be installing somewhere in the central area. When you install it, make sure it's not in the line above where your wiper is not able to reach. Because if you put it there, and as you drive, <clears throat> it gets really dirty or it starts to rain. Um, your camera's ability to record is going to be very limited. So make sure wherever you install, you install it below the wiper blade line. So for me, I think the, be the better place is actually somewhere slightly off to the right side of the, the actual dash cam for my car or like the safety camera for my car is installed. So like right here will be a better spot because it's not, uh, there's no obstruction over here. And uh, also it doesn't obstruct my view when I have the camera over there, as opposed to like somewhere here where um, it's, it might obstruct my view while I'm driving, okay? So that would be the best place to put the camera. As you can see, it's extremely install, uh, easy to install. All you need, again, <clears throat> is the power adapter, or if your car already have a USB port uh, that's building, without this, you don't have to use this. Just plug it into a USB port on your car. And for me, I have a little spot over there. And this is my old one for my old dash cam. So I'm gonna actually not use that. I'm gonna use a Garmin one. And again, just plug it in there. Okay, 
So next, you have to find a place to um, somehow put your USB cable in. Um, for me, my routing is going from here and under the glove box all the way here and maybe going to the side of the door. And as you can see, this is where my old wire is. So I'm gonna just route where my old wire is and go come up here. When you have the thing up here, uh, the, the cable is gonna be able to go somewhere in the gap over here on the top. So you can just hide the cable all the way and then go down and put and connect it to where the camera is, which is gonna be somewhere over there, okay? So that's where I'm gonna cable it. And also where you're gonna be putting the little uh, magnetic adapter or the uh, the mount uh, is gonna be, just make sure you clean it properly. And also you want to avoid the area that have those little dots because you're not gonna be able to stick it over there as effectively um, as opposed to say just a flat surface over here. So those are all things to take into consideration. Um, so I'm gonna try to find a better spot for this little sticky pad and then we're gonna put it on there and then we're gonna have the camera installed, okay? <clears throat> all right guys, as you can see, I have the USB cable plugged in and I used existing, my existing little cable hook uh, mounting through here and routing it all the way to the back of like behind the glove compartment. I might find a, a something to just tie this and just hide it all the way to the back and it routes over through the side channel over here on the side of the door, okay? So it's actually inside here, all right? So I put the cable in here and you can see there's a little gap and over, 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 and I have it out from this area. Once it's out of this area, I have another cable tie over here to just hook it and go inside and behind the side curtain airbag, okay? You, want, you don't want to obstruct the side curtain airbag. So uh, just make sure it's out of the way. Um, and also you don't want it to be obstructing any other airbags in your car uh, because that will be dangerous in a uh, kind of a dangerous situation. Okay, so make sure it's out of the way. I might even want to actually adjust and have this go a little bit lower. So if the airbag gets deployed, uh, actually it deploys this way. So the airbag gets deployed, it's not actually in the way of the airbag. And I think this is fine because again, the airbag comes out from down here to cover the window. So I don't think it's gonna be affecting it, but just make sure when you install in your car, because every car is different, it doesn't obstruct the airbag. Okay, so it goes in here and it just goes to the gap behind the, the cover and it goes to the top. And I said on the top, there's always gonna be a gap. You can hide all your cables there. And in the end, it's gonna come out like that. Okay, and now the last step will be just put on the little mount, turn on the power and just find a good spot in your car uh, that it actually was able to record a nice view of the front and we can start from there okay so let's see all right so let me just adjust and make sure it's at a good spot and i'll show you guys once i finish with the installation all right guys um so i actually found the perfect spot it's somewhere in between the two wiper blades and when i look at the screen over there there is no water droplets after the rain, so I know this is a good spot and it's always gonna be clean for the best recording possible, okay? So right now there's no power connected, so the screen is gonna come out and it's gonna use the battery and it's gonna continue recording. But as I start the car next time, um, it should be able to just go into the recording mode with the USB power from the car, okay? And uh, next step, we're gonna come back uh, later. I'm gonna drive the car uh, tomorrow and maybe tonight get some footage of the night driving so you guys can get a, a, an idea of the uh, the night driving capability or the night sensitivity of the Garmin um, dash cam 47 and uh, we'll start from there okay in the end I'll give you guys my impression on how well the dash cam works um, but for now installation as you can see super easy just hide the lines as creatively as possible without getting into the side airbags or the front airbags and you should be fine. 
and I just, uh, you know, routed it from all the, you know, gaps from the edge and all the way to here where the power is connected. Uh, again, it's super easy to install. With this little magnetic mount installed, I believe I can just take this off, as you can see, like so. The next time I need to use it, I just put it on here and connect the cable and that's pretty much it, okay? So very nicely designed, very easy to remove for storage uh, to avoid the overexposure from parking the car in the sun. Um, so, so far I like it. So let's see how it performs. Good morning everyone, so um, I turned on the audio just so I can talk uh, with you guys about the Garmin 47 while I'm commuting to work and this is early morning around 7 a.m. The sun's actually fairly high and there are quite a lot of glares and my car's window is very uh, foggy. So this is what you're gonna get, kind of a result with a foggy window and super high glare from the sun okay so I'm gonna commute for about 30 minutes and uh, um, I'll probably talk about the camera as we uh, as we drive to my work uh, just to recap on the recording of the of, of the evening uh, that I did uh, the night I bought the camera so uh, I think the quality is is acceptable it's not exceptional. It's gonna be harder to see those license plates from far away, but if you're actually right behind any kind of cars, 
you should be able to see the license plate. And I also tried the travel time lapse mode, and that actually works pretty good. Kind of interesting. So if you have a long like trip and you want to turn on the travel time lapse, um, you can do that. I still haven't figured out the red light warning mode because um, again, I'm obey obeying traffic laws. I'm not running any red light, and uh, uh, also the lane keeping. I think the lane keeping thing actually works past 30 miles per hour. Um, so that I have to test actually on the highway or at uh, so in a little bit I should be able to test it um, on the 95 So right now the glare is actually pretty bad okay so um, take close pay close attention to the license plates because usually this is what you want to record during an accident and also I'm gonna be turning on to US 1 in Miami here and it's today it's not gonna be so busy because school's out uh, but I should be able to bring my speed up just a little bit and eventually we're gonna be hitting I-95 which the US one turns into okay so if you guys didn't know the I-95 in Philadelphia actually just recently collapsed uh, I think leaving one person dead <coughs> and the driver unaccounted for for the oil tanker under under the ground um, so just an interesting piece of news and what I think this video camera is, is also good, the dash cam is also good for is like if you do uh, vlogs and you're traveling, um, you are able to actually speak uh, while recording your travel. And I think that's kind of fun because um, I definitely gonna do a, uh, my car's 10, 100,000 mile review uh, using this dash cam while I'm driving to work. Uh, other than that, some interesting thing is, yes, the camera is really, easy to be uh, taken off the magnetic mount and stored away to avoid excessive heat constantly uh, you know burning on the camera uh, during the sun if you park outside and if you don't have a garage and also the USB cable is fairly easy to remove so that's also the good part um, and again with a whole bunch of added features um, safety features so if your car doesn't have land keeping alerts it doesn't have you know um, the forward correlation warning this should be able to provide you some basic safety features for just 150 dollars so that like in that sense it's really a money well spent and it's a very compact camera my wife sits in the passenger side and she was like wow this camera is so tiny uh yet it's so fully featured So interestingly, um, the car, the dash cam is uh, is not able to detect kind of like a correlation warning. My car actually is engaged when I got slightly distracted uh, just now. So my car put out a warning and started braking for me, and the dash cam didn't do anything. So uh, maybe it's a sensitivity thing. I can try to adjust the sensitivity to make it more sensitive. And see if that would actually make it make a make a difference. But just now, that was a scary moment, um, and the camera didn't do anything. Okay.
So now we're on the highway and uh, we have fairly good markings on two sides. Um, let's see if I turn without putting on a, a turn signal that if the dash cam would actually alert me or not. Need to find a safe spot to do that. Quite a lot of cars today. Um, it just gave me a forward coalition warning while I was pretty safe. So I don't know what happened there, but I think it's definitely a sensitivity issue. Um, I can try to adjust it to make it more sensitive. So next time the forward coalition would be activated when my car is telling me uh, that the forward coalition uh, warning is, is actually on. Right, this time it actually is activated when I was pretty close to the car um, so yes so in a sense it kind of works if your car doesn't have a forward correlation like auto stop uh, this would actually help one way or the other okay but I definitely want to adjust the forward correlation sensitivity one level higher uh, because I think it's not as sensitive as I want, actually, in that case. What's also nice is uh, this camera actually has uh, uh, integrated speaker so it's able to play out those warnings fairly noticeable All right, so it's really nice that this has got a traffic uh, traffic moving alert and uh, I was uh, stuck at the red light and as the traffic is moving and my car is not moving, it actually tells me that the traffic is moving, which is really nice. If you are kind of distracted and you were just stopping there, uh, this car will let you know so nobody behind you is going to beep at you, which I think is quite nice. So we checked out the traffic moving alert and again that's actually against a kind of very harsh uh, backlit condition with the sun shining directly above.
right, so as I wrap up the review of the Garmin Dashcam 47, which again is a 1080p uh, dash cam for your car, USB powered, and it's a micro USB cable. Um, and as I review the footages that I have recorded over the last two days, um, I just want to give you guys my impression and conclusion and my maybe my recommendations on uh, what dash cam should you get. So judging by the resolution of the dash cam 47, I would say it's kind of hard to see the license plate of the cars if that is what you want to record um, or that is what, what is most important to you during your road trips or during your driving. Uh, but for general purpose use, uh, again, as you can see, like the resolution is, is more than enough. And also it, re it actually supports HDR recording. So the sky is not blown out during the drive and you have plenty of details in the shadows. So um, would I recommend this for daily driving? Absolutely, yes. And I mean, for $140, $49, um, I think personally think it's a great value, especially for people who have a very basic car that doesn't have, you know, lane keeping assist or doesn't have forward correlation warning. So basically an old car would greatly benefit from the additional features of the uh, Dashcam 47. And for people who actually have a better um, car that with full driver safety features, I would probably suggest go with the Dashcam 57 or or I think it's 67, maybe 57, the one with actually 2K recording. Uh, so that one actually would bump up the resolution a little bit. So maybe in the end, you should be able to see a little bit of the extra details on the car's license plate uh, when the car is actually kind of close to you. And that's what I would recommend. Um, I think the 57 is 2K at 140 degree angle view. Again, as you can see, 140 degree angle view is actually plenty. I would actually go against getting the 180 degree view on the 67W or something like that. Uh, that that's, that is actually just way too wide of a view for a 2K resolution camera. Okay, so you're going to be losing details and including way too much unnecessary information. So again, 140 degree lens view on the 47 and 57 maybe uh, is, is more than enough. Again, if you have a newer car with all the safety features, get the 57 with 2K uh, resolution. And if you have an older car and kind of budget is a concern, I would say, yeah, just get the 47. Uh, you get a full featured safety, you get a full safety feature uh, package in this little camera. And it's very easy to take off your camera mount for sec secure and safe storage to avoid excessive heat. And uh, um, just very lastly, uh, the recording size for the 1080p uh, recording is about 120 megabits per second, uh, per minute. So if you are doing a one hour drive, it typically requires about seven gigs of space. So the actual included uh, micro SD card would actually give you plenty of uh, storage space for more than two hours of drive, okay? Uh, but as you can see, I went for 128 gig. Uh, which actually gives me over 18 hours of recording. Um, that's way more than probably many people need. Again, if you have a long drive, a larger SD card will probably benefit. Uh, otherwise, I hope you found this comprehensive unboxing and installation and, and driving sample video review of the Garmin Dashcam 47 is, is helpful. And if you do find this helpful, please do just hit that like button and subscribe to my channel and I should have more technology related videos coming out for you guys. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.